If you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you're either in college to become a teacher, maybe about to graduate, or you're fresh out of college and looking to get hired for your first teaching position. But experience is the best teacher. Either way, you're probably feeling all the emotions. You're super excited because you've dreamed about becoming a teacher, but you're also nervous because you wanna do well in interviews and ultimately secure the teaching position you're after. To sum it up, you're a little overwhelmed. If that all sounds familiar, don't worry, you are not alone. Those feelings are completely normal as you transition from college to the classroom, but that doesn't necessarily make it any easier to deal with. Thankfully, I am here to help. In this video, I'm gonna outline in order 10 things you need to do to get hired for your first teaching job. I am kicking it off with some more good news. I have the ultimate new teacher checklist and I am giving it to you for free. So if you are interested, make sure you watch all the way until the end to get the details on how to snag it. Okay, let's jump into those 10 things you need to do. Starting with number one, revamp your expectations. Yes, it's a mindset shift. Here's the thing. Going into your first year of teaching, you may have the expectation that you will get hired to teach in your desired district at a specific school teaching the grade level of your choice. In other words, you might have your heart set on the teaching position of your dreams. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's okay to fantasize about your first teaching position because you've been waiting for this moment and ultimately it just shows how passionate you are. But you don't want that dream to cloud your judgment going into the hiring process. I don't wanna be a stick in the mud, but the reality is you probably won't get hired for your dream teaching position. Of course, there are always outliers. And if you do get hired for your dream position right out of the gate, that's fantastic. And I'm so excited for you. But unfortunately, that's just not the norm. For most people, their first teaching position may not be in the grade level they thought it would be or teaching the subject level they thought. And that's okay. Most likely, your first teaching position won't be your last. You can always shift gears later on if you want to move schools or grade levels or teach a different subject. And honestly, it will be easier to do that later down the road because you have built up experience. But when it comes to your first teaching position, you may not get to be too picky. So make sure that you set up some realistic expectations so you're not disappointed. Hopefully I didn't scare you off and you're still with me. Number two is to make some decisions. We've already established that your first teaching job may not be your ideal or your dream position, but that doesn't mean you can't have certain criteria going into it. You might have to make some adjustments as you go, and we'll come back to that in number 10, but I want you to reflect on your answers to these questions, and that will be different for each person and their situation. First, what is most important to you in a position? Is it the district or the school? Is it the amount of commute time? Is it the salary or the benefits? Is it teaching a specific grade level or subject? You have to decide what is your main priority. Then I want you to ask yourself is there a grade level or subject that you're not willing to teach? Obviously, if you're not certified to teach that grade level or subject, that's a different story. But is there something you are certified to teach, but you don't really want to? For example, I kind of knew I didn't want to teach kindergarten because I love the little kids, they're cute and adorable, but my sense of humor just would not mesh well with them. Next, what schools or districts are you interested in working for? Are you going to only apply to one or are you going to apply to multiple? This will vary geographically because some districts are really, really big and if you're in the middle of the district, it may be your only option, but if you are surrounded by smaller districts, there may be more flexibility in your choices. Next, I want you to consider what sacrifices are you willing to make? 
For example, are you willing to have a longer commute time if it means teaching at a school that you're really interested in? And finally, we've got to have this conversation. What is your backup plan if you don't get hired by the start of the school year? There is no right or wrong answer here. It really depends on you and your situation. Maybe you plan to be a substitute in that district and hope an opportunity presents itself because that does happen. Maybe you're going to work in an entirely different field and try try again the next year, or maybe you're going to go get certified to teach other grade levels or subject areas to broaden your horizons. Once you have your answers to these questions, it will make the following steps much easier and it can help you make some choices such as choosing between multiple job offers or that backup plan that we discussed. Okay, you are ready for number three, which is to prepare your resume. I recommend preparing your resume before you start applying to schools or districts because a lot of times you have to submit your resume as part of the application process. Professional resume, athletic and special skills resume. Now you may already have a resume you previously developed, but keep in mind your resume should reflect the job you are after. So a teaching resume is going to be a little bit different than a resume that got you hired to be a waitress or waiter. In addition to those standard resume elements, such as your contact information and education history, your teaching resume should also include any relevant experience you may have, especially those experiences working with students, any certifications you hold, as well as possibly a philosophy of education, which is just a short statement that demonstrates your belief about teaching. I know it's hard when you're fresh out of college and you haven't had a teaching job yet. You're like, what experience do I put on there? You can always include tutoring experience that you may have, your student teaching internship, as well as other positions you've held that work with children, such as a camp counselor. Now, if developing this and making it look aesthetically pleasing is daunting to you, I already have an editable resume and matching cover letter template. They're all together in the same product, as well as examples of my personal resume and cover letter that you can reference as you develop yours. Obviously, I took out my real contact information, but the rest of the content is exactly what I had on my resume to get hired on the spot for both of my past teaching positions. So if you are interested in that template to make it a little bit easier for you, I will have it linked for you down in the description box. But once you have created that resume, you will want a digital PDF that you can attach to applications or emails that you send, as well as printed physical copies that you can hand out to people in person, either at interviews or at job fairs. You can print these at home, but I do recommend getting resume paper. It tends to be thicker and a little bit higher quality than your standard printer paper. You can find that at almost any office supply store or even on Amazon. But but you can also get your resume professionally printed at office supply stores such as Staples or Office Depot. Now we're on to the good stuff. I mean, it's all good stuff, but number four is to apply for positions. Obviously, this process varies from state to state, district to district. Charter schools and private schools are a whole different ball game. But for most public schools in the US, you have to first apply to the district. This tends to be a very generic application, and it's typically done online. From there, you may have to complete what's called a screening interview with someone from the district. Again, this is a very basic interview. It's nothing to freak out about. It's just a way for them to make sure you have the qualifications necessary for the position you're applying for. Once you have gotten past the screening interview, you are typically placed into an applicant pool where either you can be reached out to by administrators or you can apply for specific positions such as second grade teacher or math teacher at various levels. Now again, this varies widely from district to district, state to state. So make sure you are following the directions that are provided by the district you are applying for. But I do recommend getting that application in as soon as possible so you can get that screening interview done if required and also submit any additional paperwork such as transcripts or copies of your certification because sometimes those processes can drag on. If at any point you feel like the process has stalled, remember the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So follow up through phone calls, emails, sometimes communications kind of 
fall through the cracks or get lost along the way, and you don't want that to happen to you. Once you have gotten that application in, the ball is now rolling. You are ready for number five, which is to prepare your portfolio. Listen, there will be people who try to convince you that it's not necessary. Personally, I was offered both of my last teaching positions on the spot in the interview because of my portfolio. Literally, the administrators told me that. So hear me out on this one. That's all I'm saying. You may already have a portfolio that you developed in college. I know personally, my teacher education program had us create these digital portfolios. However, they were on this online software that no one really used, so it wasn't that applicable to the actual application process for teaching jobs. Basically, I did it because I had to in college and I created a new portfolio after that. Ideally, you want some form of a physical portfolio. Think about a binder that you can take with you to in-person interviews and be able to use to answer questions. Your portfolio is a place to keep evidence of all the content on your resume. So your certifications, your transcripts, but you can also add in any elements you think might come up during the interview. So example lesson plans or pictures of things you did during your student teaching that you can then show off to the interview panel. Basically, it becomes like a security blanket so you don't have to remember all the things you want to include in your answers. You can have it on a page in front of you and be able to reference it. So for example, if you get asked a question about classroom management, because you almost certainly will, you can turn to the classroom management section of your portfolio and have examples of systems that you've used with pictures. Maybe you even have copies of parent communication that you've used, and it makes it much clearer to the interview panel what your classroom management philosophy is. Once again, if this sounds overwhelming, I have a few things that will help. First of all, I do have an editable template for Google Slides that you can use to create not only the physical portfolio, but also have a digital copy as well. With that, I also have two different videos that are helpful. One is a walkthrough of my personal portfolio, so you can see examples of everything I kept in mind, as well as a video that walks you through exactly what you need to do to set up your own. So all of those resources will be linked for you down in the description box. But if you are watching Watching this and you haven't graduated yet, let this be your sign to start saving anything and everything from papers of PDs that you go to with your mentor teacher, pictures that you take during your student teaching, lesson plans you've developed, keep all of it because you are gonna want to use them in your portfolio in the future. Now you are ready for number six, which is to prepare your cover letters. And you may be wondering why you didn't do this sooner, like when you created your resume, and it's because your cover letter should be personalized for each position you are applying for. Now, that doesn't mean creating a new letter from scratch every time, don't worry. Personally, I kept 90% of my cover letter the same, and I would swap out the individual's contact information up at the top, Plus, I would make sure I included something specific for that position, whether it was information I saw online about the school that I'm really excited about or any relevant experience I have for that exact grade level or subject area. Again, I have my exact cover letter as an example in that resume template bundle. It does include those matching cover letter templates so everything can coordinate together. So if you're interested in that as a resource to make it easier, I will have it linked for you down below. But I always thought about my cover letter as an opportunity to really highlight things that I feel like may have kind of gotten glossed over on my resume or just better be able to explain who I am as a teacher. So for example, really expressing my love for technology integration or my creativity. And sometimes those can be hard to express on a resume. And speaking of your resume, I recommend having your cover letter both digitally as a PDF so you can attach it to emails or your applications, as well as having printed copies that you can drop off at schools and or be able to take with you to interviews. Speaking of interviews, number seven, it's time to start scheduling them. And you may be thinking, well, that's easy. However, <laughs> I will say sometimes this is the hardest part of the entire process. Applicant is attempting to blackmail interviewer. You could be in an applicant pool with hundreds or even 
thousands of other people trying to get hired. And it can be very easy to just get ignored or not have anyone reaching out to you. And it feels like you're not making any progress. This is where you have to put a little bit of effort in in order to get your name and face out there in order to get opportunities to interview. Once you have applied to the district, I want you to personally reach out to individual schools and administrators to introduce yourself as a candidate for hire, even if it doesn't appear that those schools are hiring. Here's the thing, sometimes positions become available very quickly, especially as teachers move grade levels or schools, change districts, change positions. These new openings can come up like that. And you wanna make sure you've already gotten your name out there. So when they're looking to hire for that position, you can be one of the first people they think about. So I recommend going onto the district website, finding a few schools you're interested in, either because they're close to you or you've heard good things things and I want you to either send an email to the administrators or visit the school in person. There are pros and cons for each. If you choose to email the administrator, you're going to introduce yourself, you're going to express your interest in working there, and you're going to attach your resume, cover letter, and possibly share a view-only link to your digital portfolio if you have that available. It's not a requirement, but it can kind of give you a leg up. If you choose to visit schools in person, you are going to assemble a folder with a copy of your resume, cover letter, and I would even throw in like an example lesson plan just to show what you're capable of. I personally prepped like 10 to 12 of these all at one time and then I would take them to the school. I would typically ask to speak with the administrator, but I'll be honest, it's very rare that you actually get a chance to speak with them because they are busy. That's okay. You're going to leave that folder with the secretary as you introduce yourself and it becomes this physical artifact that you are leaving behind. Hopefully that secretary will then give the folder to the administrator, but you can always follow up with an email as well. Either way, it gets their attention, and then if a position does open up or they're currently hiring for a position, you become one of the first people they want to schedule an interview with. This is exactly how I got my last teaching job. I was new to the area and had no connections. So after applying to the district, I put together about 10 folders and I personally drove to schools I was interested in and introduced myself. Sometimes I just handed the folder to the secretary and left and that's okay. Other times I maybe got to give it to the principal, but it was a very brief interaction. Other times they brought me back for an impromptu interview on the spot. So do be prepared for that. But the job I ended up getting hired for, they were not even hiring at the time. They had no openings. But about a week or two later, an opening came up and they reached out to me for an interview right away. So in the meantime, you're gonna move on to number eight, which is to practice answering interview questions. Look, I don't care how you do it. You could have a friend or family member conduct a mock interview with you. You can stand in front of a mirror. You can record yourself on your phone. You can force your dog to sit in the room and listen to you. Whatever you choose, you need to make sure that you practice actually answering out loud interview questions that you will most likely get asked. The more you practice articulating your responses, the easier they will come out in an actual interview and the more confident you will feel going into the interview. And you might be wondering, okay, what questions do I need to practice answering? I've got you covered. I have a video where I give sample interview answers to some of the most commonly asked questions. And with that, I also have an interview prep product, which has a list of commonly asked questions along with a template you can use to kind of draft out sample responses. Both of those will be linked for you down in the description box if you're interested in a little help. Now, of course, you have to adjust the answers to be true to you and your beliefs and your experience, but it at least gives you a little template, if you will, to go off of. And now we are ready for number nine, which is nail your interviews. Truly, I want you to think about this as the fun part. This is the chance to show off all your hard work and really be able to show the interview panel what you can bring to the table. I say that knowing that I'm someone who got incredibly nervous every time I went in for an interview, but as much as possible, just remind yourself, 
you've got this. You've done the work, you're ready for it, and just let them know who you are and who you will be as a teacher. That being said, I don't recommend scheduling an interview with your dream school or for your dream position as your first interview. You know, save that one, save the best for last. I recommend scheduling as many interviews as you can, even if you're not super excited about the position, just to get experience, because the more interviews you do, the better you will get at them. Once again, I have a full video where I go into detail about this process, which I will link for you, but in summary, here's what you're gonna do. First, you're gonna prepare a bag that you will take with you to every interview, so you don't have to worry about leaving anything behind. This bag should look somewhat professional. I know if you're a college student on a budget, you gotta work with what you got, but maybe don't opt for your LL Bean backpack you've had since middle school. A basic tote bag will work. Inside, you are going to place your teaching portfolio. Again, this is not something that you're giving to them. It's just something you're bringing with you as a tool that you're going to have in front of you during the interview, but we'll come back to that. You're also going to put inside another folder with your resume, cover letter, and maybe that example lesson plan. Even if you've already dropped one off at the school, bring another one just in case. You're also going to add a notepad and a writing utensil of some kind so you can take notes during the interview. And within that notepad, you may already have a list of questions ready to go that you know you wanna ask the interview panel, either about the school, district, or position. You could also consider having like some notes in your notebook that you want to reference during the interview, almost like an extra security blanket. I did this at almost every interview and I never had anyone like look down upon it or at least communicate that with me. So if you're feeling not super confident, that's a little hack for you. I also recommend adding in some mints because you never know when you might be called in for an interview very, very quickly and having some blank thank you cards. We'll come back to that in a bit. Then you're gonna dress professionally. It's up to you to decide what that means. Personally, I had one go-to outfit that I wore at every single interview because it's an outfit that made me feel good. Then you're gonna arrive to the interview five to 10 minutes early. You're gonna be kind and respectful to everyone you cross paths with along the way from the secretary to custodians to other teachers who happen to be in the office and obviously the members of the interview panel. By the way, I keep saying interview panel because most interviews there are multiple individuals there. It could just be a single person, but it could also be an entire table of like 10 different people. So just be prepared for those possibilities. At the start of the interview, you are going to hand the folder to the interview panel or at least offer it because it shows that you were prepared. Even if you see the one you already gave them sitting in front, offer it again. You're gonna take your portfolio and place it in front of you. As you get asked questions, you will take it upon yourself to open the portfolio and show examples. If you don't do that yourself, chances are they're not going to ask to see it. So don't wait for them to ask about it. Take initiative, open it up, show them pages. After that, they may ask to look through it and that's a really good sign. If you get asked a question that you're not really sure how to answer, your response is, that's a really great question. Could we come back to that at the end so I can reflect on my answer? Chances are they won't remember to come back to it, but if they do, you at least bought yourself some time to think. At the end, if they prompt you to say, hey, do you have any questions for us? Your answer is yes, because you have already done your due diligence and you already have at least one question prepared to ask them because again, it shows that you are truly interested. This interview is over and I get the job. That question could be as simple as, what are you most proud of about your school? But make sure you ask them at least one question. Once the interview is over, you're going to follow up. My personal favorite way to do this was to leave the interview, go out to my car, or maybe sit on a bench outside if the weather is nice, take that blank thank you card that I had in my bag, and write a thank you note to the interview panel, go right back in and drop it off. If I can't get back in the school and there's like a mail slot, I might slip it through there. 
But another option is to at least send a follow-up email thanking them for their time. And this is a great opportunity to clarify any of your responses. If there was a question and you kind of stumbled over your response, you can be like, hey, I was thinking more about that question you asked me and here are my thoughts. Once you get back to your car or you get back home, write down any of those challenging questions so you can better prepare for them in the future. And then finally, number 10, the last thing I want you to do is focus on what you can control and adjust as you go. There will be things out of your hands and you have to keep that in mind. For example, you can only control what you bring as a candidate to the interview. And I don't mean physically bring, I mean as a person, as an educator. You ultimately can't control what anyone else brings as a candidate. So if you don't get offered the position because someone was better suited for it, it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about that. I won't lie, it can feel defeating going on multiple interviews and not getting offered the position. But rather than just being disappointed and having your confidence tank, use that to add fuel to your fire. Find ways to better prepare yourself for the future. So practice answering those questions. Maybe add additional resources to your portfolio. Apply to other positions. Go out and find more PD. That way you're controlling what you can control and you're letting the rest be. And with that, you might have to adjust as you go. You might have to broaden that criteria you came up with at the beginning in order to have more opportunities for positions. And since we have now referenced number one with revamping your expectations, I feel like we've come full circle. And if you are still watching, you may remember I mentioned at the beginning that I had a free checklist for you. So in order to grab that free checklist, you're gonna head over to firstclassteaching.com slash free checklist. I am not linking this in the description box because you truly had to watch the video in order to get that link. So again, firstclassteaching.com slash free checklist. From there, just add in your name and email and I will send you that checklist right away. But good news, if you are watching this video right when it releases, I also have the opportunity for you to get a free hour long webinar called Jumpstart Your First Year of Teaching, what you need to know before you start. If you are interested in that, all you have to do is pre-order my book, First Class Teaching, 10 Lessons You Don't Learn in College. After you pre-order, you're just gonna submit your name, email, and order number on my book website, firstclassteaching.com. And once again, I will send you that free webinar along with that checklist. But I hope that this video and that free checklist will be super helpful for you and really raise your confidence going into your interviews. If you did enjoy it, please give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Please share this out with any of your teacher friends who you think might benefit from it and leave some comments of encouragement down below even if you're a veteran teacher and you happen to watch this what do you wish you had known going into your first year of teaching i would love for that comment section just to be a resource for all of the new teachers as always thank you for watching i love you so much don't forget to put your positive pants on and i will catch you in the next one